There's probably no country on earth that doesn't have a long tradition of dolls, either as childhood playthings, religious totems, or some as collectibles. Which brings us, as always, to Japan, where dolls are all those things and so much more. The zeal for dolls here dates back centuries. Girls are given a set of traditional Hina dolls by their grandparents at birth or on their first birthday. And for the past 400 years or so, on every 3rd of March, a nationwide doll festival has brought traffic to a standstill. There's an official doll festival song that goes, <clears throat> Let's light the lanterns on the tiered stand. Let's set peach flowers on the tiered stand. Five court musicians are playing flutes and drums. Today is a joyful doll's day. Well, of course, it sounds slightly better in Japanese. And then on the 25th of September comes the Doll Burning Festival, which is great for the economy, because then everybody has to go out and buy new dolls all over again. In recent years, the diva of all dolls here has been Licker-chan, the Japanese Barbie. But while liquor mania is mostly confined to girls, men here have gone doll loopy too. The otaku, or nerds, are fervent collectors of figures related to their favourite manga or anime characters. But it's OK, because the objects of their adoration are usually lovely ladies. And as you'd expect, with a nation always on the move, a new doll generation is marching into power. Just as Superman was so much more than just a man, and you can look that up because it's a fact, so there exists a doll figure, or Dolphy, which is more than just a doll. Super Dolphy. Super Dolphy! Kawaii! Yes, Kawaii. Super Dolphy is the most talked about, most coveted doll on the scene today. Standing 22 inches tall and costing three to 500 pounds or even more, the Super Dolphys are almost fully customizable. You can choose their skin, hair, clothing, eyes, head, hands, and body type. Two more things you should know. One, Super Dolphys enthusiastic owners are almost exclusively adults. And two, in Japan, this is not considered at all weird. What happened was, they sat this girl at the window. At first, I had no intention of buying it because it was so expensive. But one day, all of a sudden, I thought, she's cute. OK, just one, just this girl. And so I ended up, I don't use the word buy. I use the word to bring them home. So I brought her home, and the rest all came, one after the other. So she's one of the girls who have become a significant part of my memories. On weekdays, when I am at work, I can only play with them in the morning and at night. On a day off, if there is nothing else to do, I play with them all day long. Specialist Super Dolphy shops are now occupying acres of prime Tokyo real estate. Super Dolphy owners tend to be a dedicated lot, purchasing or creating vast wardrobes and imbuing the dolls with personalities and even emotions. This is Claire. She's a tomboy and full of energy. These two are supposed to be sister and brother. This one is her little brother, Chloe. He has a hard time controlling his energetic sister because she's too much of a tomboy. They follow the latest doll styles in glossy magazines like Fashion Doll Quarterly. For me, it's not just buying the dolls and displaying them. With these, we can make clothes. We can put makeup on the dolls and change their hair. We can make a doll that is the only one in the world. That is the real charm of these dolls. These trendy Super Dolphy fanciers like to take their dolls out on the town and then perhaps a private room in a karaoke parlor. There aren't many places where you can bring out such big dolls without causing trouble. It's not that we make it regular meeting. It's just that someone phones up suddenly and says, shall we meet up tomorrow? So it's very spontaneous. And then we think about which clothes to take. Yes, we look forward to it. But it's not all urban glitz. Other Super Dolphy fans enjoy homey get-togethers with fellow enthusiasts. Think of it as a play group for plastic children. <laughs> Is this real? Yes, it is. You can drink it. She's a minor. She shouldn't be drinking. How old is Joe? 16. He's a minor then, but he doesn't look like 16 at all. I don't think just because you're a man that he can't be interested in dolls. 
Whether they are male or female, they reflect me. They reflect my ideal image, I think. You can't help loving them, especially if you can't create your own daughters yourself. Lest you think this might be one of those overhyped phenomena that only appeal to a small number of extreme characters, we take you now to Super Dolphy World Headquarters in Kyoto. Here, pilgrims from around the world come to worship at the spiritual home of Super Dolphy. There's a museum, classes in makeup and clothes making, a doll beauty salon, and on site doctors to repair injured dolls. <laughs> The super dolphin is a mirror that reflects yourself. When you're happy, it is happy. When you're sad, it is sad. And the main attraction, birthing ceremonies in which fans take possession of their new super dolphins. Each and every customer meets their own destined doll. They fall in love with the doll in a way, thinking that the doll is a reborn form of themselves. Then they become an owner. Yes, here they create not only the dolls, but the mythology as well. The one who is allowed to have a life as a human by a holy heavenly spirit is now welcoming another you from your pure heart. If you're thinking cult, you might not be far off, though it's certainly one of the cuter cults out there. As for the future, big plans. So many pilgrims flock here, they've decided to open a Super Dolphy hotel on the premises. You'll be able to take a weekend break with your doll in a traditional Japanese tatami room. Japan's population is shrinking rapidly. It's a reproductive crisis. Can Super Dolphy be part of the reason? <laughs>